Now that we have a cannon that draws and responds to input from the player, let's go a step further and make this cannon fire cannonballs that will move across the screen. You've probably noticed by now that the XNA framework has a whole lot of predefined classes that help us do a lot of the very basic things we need, such as loading and drawing. But when it comes to game concepts like position or rotation, we're on our own. This is because the XNA framework doesn't make assumptions about the kind of game we might want to make. That's good, because it gives us the flexibility to make any game we like. But it also means that when we introduce a new concept, like objects moving across the screen, it's up to us to determine how to make that work. Here's how we can do it. We have a two-dimensional vector in our game object class called position. If we have a second two-dimensional vector for velocity, we can add the value of that velocity vector to our position vector every update call, and the object will change position every update. If the value of the velocity vector is small, then the position update will be small, and the object will appear to move through the world very slowly. The larger we make the velocity vector, the more position will change every update call, and the faster the object will appear to move. With an object moving across the screen comes the eventuality of it moving off the screen entirely. We need to have some way of dealing with an object that leaves the screen. Since it can't be drawn outside the screen, it makes sense that it should probably not be updated anymore. Such an object should be considered dead, so we'll need a variable to track whether or not an object is alive or dead. Let's add these two variables, a velocity vector and an alive flag, to our game object class. Open your gameobject.cs file by clicking on the gameobject.cs tab, or, if it's not in the tab bar, double click gameobject.cs in the Solution Explorer. Just below the declaration, public, vector2, center, add two more declarations. Public, vector2, velocity. Public, bool, alive. The first is our velocity vector that we can use to modify the positions vector each frame. The second is the flag we can use to tell our game if an object should be considered alive or dead. This will be useful when we deal with objects that go off the screen and need to stop being drawn. Now, go to the constructor inside this game object class. Place your cursor just after the assignment, center, equals new vector2, add a line, and then type the following. Velocity equals vector2 dot zero. Alive equals false. This sets our new variables to safe defaults with a velocity of zero and our alive flag set to false. If you're wondering about whether this changes our cannon object, the answer is that it does. The cannon object now has these extra properties, set to the defaults in the constructor. But that doesn't mean the cannon won't draw on the screen because alive is set to false. Remember, it's up to us to tell the XNA framework whether or not to draw based on our parameters. And right now, the cannon draws no matter what. We won't use the alive variable or the velocity vector for the cannon, but we will for the cannonballs, which is what we're going to create now.